Welcome back. I'm Alina from the Reykjavik Grape Wine, and uh, we're back close to Nautaye Valley um, on the actually kind of latest dam protecting the lava from flowing onto the fiber cables on the other side. Um, today will actually be my last Volcano Newscast. Um, it has been a blast and John will take over next week. And then Vale will be back fresh and relaxed from his holiday. Um, today we have a super nice summer day. Um, it's approximately 13 degrees Celsius. And we just have a slight wind of about, I don't know, eight meters per second. So it's actually a pretty warm day. Uh, some people in the comments have mentioned that in their country it's like a winter day, 13 degrees, but here it's actually kind of as warm as it gets. Maybe we'll get warmer in the future with climate change, we'll see. Um, yeah, so we're gonna walk um, route B, or we're on route C right now, and then we're gonna kind of cross onto route B and continue there. So tag along. As I've already mentioned last week, experts have started to measure out the whole eruption site. Um, and they did that with airplanes. So they got an Isavia owned airplane with some measurement uh, equipment. Isavia is the, if, if you know, the national airport and um, I think airplane like service provider here in Iceland. Um, so they got an airplane, they started flying over um, the eruption site and we're able to measure out basically the whole area, measure out the different kinds of lava flow. Um, and they have detected that it has decreased quite rapidly. Um, so the average lava flow rate right now is 7.5 cubic meters per second. Um, they've also detected that um, there are now four stages since the eruption initially started on March 19th. So the first kind of um, lava flow stage was uh, in the first two weeks when lava was flowing quite steadily with around, um, I think, six cubic meters per second. Then uh, stage number two was as well lasting for two weeks after that um, and was characterized by a lot of new vents and fissures opening up. Um, and lava flow rate was at about seven cubic meters per second. Then stage three started, um, which you probably know as like the stage where we had the fire gazer. Um, it was in late April and May and it lasted for two and a half months. So it was quite a long period. Um, and then lava flow was or reached its maximum with 13 cubic meters per second. Um, yeah, and this lasted at around or until uh, July 2nd, actually, when the new volcanic rhythm started. Um, you've already heard about the new rhythm, which just means that the volcano is going basically up every couple hours. Right now, it's approximately seven to eight hours. Uh, it basically takes a break, takes its beauty sleep, um, and then it starts again for another seven, eight hours. So it's quite like a, the same window basically right now. Um, yeah, so since July 2nd, the fourth stage, we have entered the fourth stage, um, which is very, um, it fluctua fluctuates a lot. Um, so we are varying in between five cubic meters per second. That was actually last week when we were all the way over uh, and looking into Meradalir. Um, and then we had a flow stage already of 7.5 cubic meters per second. So it has increased a bit since the week before with five. Um, yeah, so there have been um, similar lava flow rates as in stage three with 13 cubic meters per second, but it's just fluctuating a lot. Sometimes there's no lava coming at all. Um, sometimes there's coming a lot. And most of the lava is flowing into Miradalir, where we were last time, quite uh, a bit. And here in Nautaye, there is right now no lava flow or no active lava flow, 
which does not mean that this is gonna stay like that. Um, so we just kind of need to wait until the crater breaks on the side into um, Nautaye and then lava will, can flow here again. Uh, and then Sudostrante Vigur, like a lot of people in the comments have asked how the progression of lava flow is there. Um, it's not reached the road yet uh, because the road is close to Nautaye and there's no active lava flow right now, but that can change. Obviously nobody knows when that will happen, um, but we'll just see as time progresses. Yeah, um, I have a very impressive number. So uh, actually the lava, um, or the, um, den not density, I'm missing the word, um, like the amount of lava is around 96 million cubic um, meters right now. Uh, and the whole area lava field is around four square kilometers big. Um, and that number is from July 22nd, which is just five years, uh, five years, sorry, five days ago. So it's quite recent. So there has been so much lava coming up and uh, probably even more as the volcano continues. Yeah, um, yeah. so experts have detected that the activity is going down or like the, not the activity, but the lava flow. Um, and they have said that it might be the beginning to the end, but as always, they never know. You can never be sure with uh, scientists or, I mean, they never know because so much changes so rapidly. Um, and so uh, there's a little chopper flying by, it's a bit loud. Yeah, so uh, geophysicists have said that the um, volcano will probably rather slow down um, quite slowly uh, instead of just dying out rapidly. So what will probably happen in the long run is that the, um, it will st uh, just kind of take longer breaks and then uh, start again to erupt and then the breaks will just get longer and longer um, until it finally will die basically but nobody knows when that will happen it could be next week it could be in two years it could be in six months nobody's sure and um, yeah so the reason why there is less lava flow right now is actually um, because of like in the beginning as you already know, the lava comes from the upper part of the mantle. So it doesn't come from a magma chamber as with most volcanoes. Um, and the kind of channel was 17 uh, kilometers deep and quite narrow. And in the beginning, it was kind of widening up um, because of erosion of the like kind of channel walls. Um, but now they said that the supply is maybe kind of going down um, so uh, the channel is kind of narrowing back up again um, and actually since last Tuesday uh, on Wednesday it kind of went out again and the crater was empty again um, and all the lava solidified so you could basically see an empty crater until it started again so uh, for now this will be a rhythm that just will kind of continue itself for uh, the next time and nobody knows when it will change yeah So I'm actually not standing in lava here because you should never walk on lava or stand on lava. I'm just on a little kind of valley. Uh, it was Art's idea. <laughs> yeah. So now we're on the dam that we already showed in the newscast two weeks ago. Um, they built it to keep the uh, lava in Geltingadalit, where we are next to right now. And from there it's flowing into Nautaye, where we were earlier. Um, and as you've probably already heard from John, we've been dealing with a new COVID outbreak in the last week. Numbers have spiked and we're dealing with the Delta variant, but he's telling you or told you already more about it. Um, but a thing now with a volcano, like how is it um, coming together, is that the pollution, I know I've already talked a lot about pollution in the last volcano newscast, um, it can cause COVID-like symptoms. So uh, it can actually cause uh, fatigue, um, uh, achy throat, uh, headaches, uh, lethargy, all that kind of stuff. So if you went to the volcano and you have those symptoms, um, better get tested in order to not risk to infect other people. Um, but those 
kind of volcano symptoms are not really problematic. Uh, they will fade after like a day max, but still rather be safe than sorry. Um, and right now the gas pollution is flowing into uh, Nautai. So it's good to not stay there for too long. And if you visit a volcano, always check out the gas levels in order to not um, risk yourself um, being too long in the pollution. And one person in the comments has actually asked about volcanic ash and uh, kind of like, I think they call it chemical pneumonia that can be caused by volcanic ash. Um, we're not dealing with this here because this volcano was not an explosive one. Um, it was only basically a peaceful fissure or vent opening up. Um, and explosive volcanoes only, uh, they happen basically when gases in the magma expand and then they kind of leave the magma rapidly and explode when the magma comes in contact with ice or water. So we did not have this here. It was basically there in 2010 in AF Jatlajökull, if you remember. Um, but luckily we're not dealing with um, volcanic ash here. So it is a bit safer uh, as of the moment. Unfortunately, the volcano is inactive right now. It uh, stopped this morning. Uh, which is a bit of a bummer, but uh, it will probably take like a seven hour break as the experts predicted and then start again maybe tonight or tomorrow. We will see. Um, so the crater is probably going to be empty right now. So the lava solidified, which will be, it's quite interesting to see actually. Um, there are as well some new viewpoints um, that have been named. Not really creative in my opinion. Um, there's actually this one where we are at right now. It's uh, called viewpoint B when you walk uh, path B as well. Uh, and you have a really nice view like onto the crater and into Geltengadalir. Um, and as well Stori Rutur, which we can see over there. And there is actually the other viewpoint, which is called Viewpoint L, um, which is just kind of at the, I think it's actually on, uh, uh, behind, like uh, before um, Stori Rutur, behind Lanke Rukur. Um, and then the first one is actually all the way over there, where you start, uh, going up on Lankirukur and this one is called Viewpoint N. So um, it gives a very nice overview into Nautai, uh, the valley where not any lava is flowing in right now. Yeah. Um, so some other news were uh, there were again two people missing, uh, I think two days ago. Um, and uh, they, luckily they were found after two hours, not like the American guy that was uh, I think missing three weeks ago and uh, it took them 24 hours to find him but luckily he was safe and sound as well. Um, be always careful if you're here like wear proper shoes we just saw um, a bit of an accident where somebody had to be rescued by the Bjarkonosveit the rescue team uh, because I think of a, like a, um, a twisted ankle so hopefully it was not too bad uh, but always be careful and very important uh, yesterday in the news there was a, a report about a family taking a um, a small baby in you know the backpack on uh, onto the lava never ever walk on the lava we've said it so many times uh, because you can see it steams so it's still super hot and can be liquid lava underneath even like the solidified cover. So even though it looks hardened and cold, it's often still warm and you never know what slumbers underneath. Um, and the lava still has a temperature of about a thousand degrees Celsius. So uh, if you fall in, the police and the rescue teams have said they will not rescue you um, because they do not want to res uh, like risk their own lives, which is quite understandable. So. Uh, don't be an idiot, don't be stupid, don't walk on lava. Yeah, quite easy. 
Some people tend to forget that it, this is actually an active volcano and it's not Disneyland. Like, respect nature and have respect for it. Yeah. If you want to like set a statement, there's as well uh, a t-shirt actually, like don't walk on lava. It's available in our shop. So uh, if you want to set a statement, go and check it out. So this volcano is actually not the only one that's showing unrest at the moment in Iceland. Um, you've probably or maybe watched the Netflix show Katla. So the volcano Katla right now uh, is showing uh, a lot of earthquakes and seismic activity. Um, but this is actually quite common in the summer months um, when uh, the water from, I think it's called Mirdalskjökull, starts melting down and um, then uh, it just uh, earthquakes. It's kind of called ice quakes. They're not as deep. So um, we probably don't have to worry too much about Katla because it's quite normal activity in the summer. Uh, but then um, Grimsvötten is actually quite uh, active right now and experts have already um, uh, kind of detected or predicted Jökullöps is called, uh, they're kind of extensive glacier floods. Um, this is a geological uh, phrase that's actually from Icelandic, Jökullöp. Um, and they have predicted those uh, and then a following eruption but nothing has happened last summer um, but now they have detected enormous amounts of water in the glacial lakes and the thing is um, if there's a lot of water in those lakes the pressure on the magma chamber under Grimsvetten is increasing um, and then in the end, if the water or the, uh, turns basically into Jökullöps, like in the, to those uh, glacial floods, the pressure decreases again, and then it can uh, cause the like more pressure on the um, on the magma chamber, or uh, when it decreases. So uh, there's actually right now uh, the most water in uh, those lakes since 1998. And that was as well when the last eruption in Grimsvetten happened. So it's quite interesting uh, to see how this will develop. Um, and additionally, additionally, it's important to say that Grimsvetten is overdue. It uh, erupts every 10 years. And last time it erupted was in 2004. So we will see what happens. It might erupt or maybe not. Nobody knows. Uh, the problem there is that it's actually close to Badabunka, which is a very big one. Um, and it has in the past kind of ripped Badabunka with it. So both erupted at the same time. Yeah, and we'll see. Uh, and this one is located in Vatnajökull, so uh, on the biggest glacier area in Iceland. So yeah, interesting things may be happening this year, maybe not. We will see. Um, earlier we were... Um, seeing a kind of, um, how should I call them? Like a team doing experiments uh, regarding the glass uh, fiber cables. And we did a little interview with them. Um, so yeah, take a look. In the last newscast, we've already talked about the fiber optic cables and we're here with a specialist uh, who's doing some experiments right now. Yeah, I'm from Verkis, an engineering company, and we're here doing work in collaboration with the University of Iceland mm -hmm. and different telecommunication companies. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we will have two uh, fiber optic cables here side by side, and we are going to put some thermal protection along one of the cables and measure the temperature along the cable. Mm, okay. And we have like six different types of setups wow. that we're putting down now. Okay. And then we'll me measure if the lava ever comes here, we'll, we'll measure continuously the temperature on each of the cables. Mm -hmm. And hope that they will survive the heat. Yeah, we have two different types of cables. Mm -hmm. One of them is a normal cable that should survive up to 160 degrees. Yeah, wow. But we've already seen that it survives for longer. Mm -hmm. We measured up to 400 degrees on the cable that's behind the dam. Okay. But now it's it's that totally yeah. bad oh no <laughs> but and yeah so that's one of the cables and mm -hmm. the other one should survive up to 400 degrees okay 
And wow. then, yeah. And the cables reach all the way from the dam to here? Yeah, from the dam to there, yes. Okay, yeah. It's interesting. Do you, will you um, publish the results somewhere? Yeah, that the, the results will be published. Okay. Uh, and we're working on this with the telecommunication company, so mm -hmm. it's very um, relevant for, for building new fiber optic cables yeah. and putting protection if it works at all okay. along already, yeah. ca cables already, like along the Sydestrandavegur. Mm -hmm. They've put thermal protection along that cable, and, and, but we don't know how well it will work, mm -hmm. and then we'll also use it to calibrate models. Okay, that's very so interesting. For conductivity into the yeah. ground. Yeah. Thank you for the information. What was your name again? Christine Marta. Okay, thank you. But my main main f field, special field, is snow avalanches. Oh. <laughs> and avalanche dams. Yeah. So this is a different type of fluid material. Yeah. Very, yeah. Yeah, very you different. Can say it so. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so this was it. This was my last official uh, volcano newscast. It has been a blast. You were all really nice in the comments. I appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for um, coming along on this uh, exploration here. Um, make sure to check out the shop and the uh, Grape Wine High Five Club. It's always worth it. Thank you, Chopper, for being loud. <laughs> um, yeah, so thank you so much. Maybe see you in the future. We'll see. Bye.